Welcome to Developing the Leader Within podcast, the podcast that brings you leadership insights from the brightest minds shaping our world. Join us as we dive into conversation with trailblazers, innovators, and change makers, spanning every corner of the globe. Get ready to explore new perspectives, gain actionable insights, and become the leader the world needs today. Unleash your potential. Tune into Developing the Leader Within podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Let's embark on this transformative journey together. Developing the Leader Within podcast, leading beyond limits. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode. Today, we are speaking with Alex Ramos. Alex is the founder of Lead Without Fear. He is a speaker, coach, veteran, and he helps organizations create profound employee engagement through mission-driven leadership. Alex, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, it's great to be on your show. I've been looking forward to this, as you know. I mean, you and I have met quite a few times, and uh, especially I, I just want to bring this up because you know, it, September 11th, and I saw a post of, that you did on LinkedIn about the loss of two shipmates at the Pentagon. And I just, when I was thinking about this day and sharing this day with you, I would just felt, I felt honor. I felt pride because it, in, a, in an Orlando where there's not a lot of, you know, huge military community installations, jets flying in the air, and, and you remember that camaraderie. To, to, to know you, to spend this moment with you, it made me think about the moments I had in the military from that day when it happened, September 11th, I was in health psychology class at the University of Florida. I was in ROTC, I was a senior, and I won't forget that day, right? And then you think about everything that followed. And when you mention your two fallen shipmates, I actually have two bracelets on my desk. And one of them is of Captain David Wisniewski. He was a, a, a rescue pilot, HH-60, who was shot down and later passed away from his injuries. But I flew with him in Okinawa. As an aerospace physiologist, we would, we would fly and kind of learn the environment. And I worked with a night vision goggle program with him, the panoramic with the four tubes. And just an incredible human being. And then Staff Sergeant Forrest B. Sibley, I have his bracelet. He was a combat controller who was unfortunately killed along with his captain in a, a convoy, in an ambush. And he went through our training. And to me, it's just, I think about today, and we talk about so those that continue to suffer from the visible and invisible scars of combat, of war. And today, I just want to thank you because one of the best ways is to keep living, right? To keep giving. So I appreciate not only being on your show, being on, on this day is very meaningful. So thank you. No, you're very welcome. You know, we come to this day and this week we'll reminisce on what it was to be America back then. Uh, a, a lot of painful memories, uh, one that's very near and dear to my heart, not only because of the two uh, shipmates that, that were lost, but one of them was a real close friend. And I have a story attached to that that I won't share today, but uh, right. you're very welcome. And I hope that this week, as we are coming from September 11th, that we continue to honor all those that lost their lives and never forget. But folks, we're going to be talking about leadership today in a very special way because uh, Alex is a performance, right? Human performance coach. He came from that industry in the Air Force, and I mentioned he was a vet. And so we're going to be talking about unlocking leadership resilience, self-awareness, and high performance. But before we get into all that conversation, Alex, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah. So, you know, I, this question about, you know, who are you? It's almost like identity. A lot of times, you know, we tend to go into the CV, the resume, all the label certifications that we have. And after retiring from the military, I really had to ask my question, or ask that question to myself, like, well, wait a minute, you know, you've identified with the military so much, like, what is it that you're all about? Like, when you talk about self with the big S, like, tell us about yourself. And what I absolutely love is the art and science of leadership. But more, like, more importantly, I absolutely love witnessing when somebody experiences 
you know, leadership, that the joy of leading. And that's where I found myself, you know, in the military and where I find myself today is, wait a minute, as leaders, how do we create this profound engagement with our people? You know, 20 plus years of service, you have, you have an opportunity to cut your teeth, uh, you know, retired as a lieutenant colonel, and then started coaching in the civilian industry. And what I found when people ask me to say, hey, what are you all about? What are you doing now? Who are you? I said, you know what? I'm about mission-driven leadership. I'm about how do we take and have people feel, feel the mission? How do they feel what they're doing? How do they have a visceral response to what they do, that purpose? And how do we bring that out of people? So as, as I coach and I, and I see people light up and really fall in love with what they do and the process of becoming a, be, a better leader, that's, that's, that's what really brings me joy today. Absolutely. And I know that you did a lot of great work. You rose to the top as a commander at, in your tenure and were able to uh, command. And that's an amazing privilege that the United States military dawns on an individual. And so thank you for that service and thank you for all that you do. Now, as we're talking about leaders, we're talking about human performance. A lot of times that is driven by habits and behaviors, right? That's mm -hmm. what uh, drives us to action. So what key habits or behaviors do you see in highly effective leaders that set them apart from others? Yeah, I think for, for me, it's you, leadership has to be personal. It has to be personal. You have to make it personal. But of course, as the saying goes, don't take it personal. Some of the best leaders that I've worked for and with, and even looking within myself, it's making that leadership responsibility, that role that you have personal. You, you, you have to, you, you got to know what, what is it about that role, that responsibility that you've been given that matters? And how does it connect to what matters to you? And the best leaders, when they make it personal, people sense that. Your team feels that. And they can get behind that level of leadership, that emotion, where now they start to believe in what they're doing. And so I found the, the, the best of leaders really take that, take that on, make it personal. But then when they get some kind of feedback or you get some kind of result, and it's maybe not something you're looking for, they don't take it personal, right? Because they've made this mission something that's so important to them that they're going to be in receive mode and take that information to make whatever it is that their responsibility is better. So that, that's one thing. And so the question is, well, how do I do that? And one of the, one of the things that, that I found is you, you got to be, be a student of leadership. I think every great leader is a student of leadership. We don't ever know it all and nor should we, that would be kind of boring, right? So we want to keep learning and you can learn from anyone. Some of the best leaders, their behaviors is asking others, regardless of what degrees they have, what rank they have, what position they have, what industry they work for. They feel and know that they can learn from anyone. You can learn from anyone, right? So, so be a student of leadership, make it personal. And then one of the last, I think one of the things that I had to go through myself, and I learned, I learned this saying from, from Flatter Inc. through my coaching uh, certifications and, and programs. And, and Dr. Flatter said, uh, do you need to go back and heal or do you want to move forward and grow? Do you want to go back and heal? Do you need to go back and heal or do you want to move forward and grow? And this is where I really found the strength as a leader and in others who said, what is it about me, my own behaviors, my own barriers, my own emotions, how I feel about things? Do I need to go back and heal some things from my past? Do I need to go back and heal some experiences or events so that I can move forward and grow? Yes, I've had to do it. And some great leaders have had to have done that. And that takes a great deal of humility and self-awareness. Absolutely. You know, I've always said that true leaders make a concerted decision mm. that today they are going to be a leader. And those that take the time to make that decision daily, yeah, commit to leading because we often get in positions where leadership is an obligation. Uh, leadership right. is a burden. Leadership right. is a task. 
And when you treat leadership in that capacity, you don't fulfill leadership. You just play it. And that's the worst thing. I, I'd rather have not have a leader that is in there trying to play the role uh, and rather have a leader that chose that day that they would be a leader. Uh, we're going to get the best out of them. So thank you for sharing that. Now, we are in troubled times. Now, times have always been troubling, if you ask me. If you look in history, there's always a troubled time. This is just ours, right? So we're living our troubled times. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is an environment. There's a lot of pressure. There's high pressure. There's high demands. We don't know which way our nation is going here in the next month or so. And so those things create tension. So how do you help leaders develop resilience and mental toughness in high pressure environments? Yeah, this is, this is something I get asked a lot. And it's like, you know, resilience is a, it's, is, has been a popular term for a while now, in my opinion, and even in the military. And then we have mental toughness and even in the military, think about mental toughness, high pressure, you know, high you know, elite performers and so how do you get that mindset how do you how do you build something and i remember after a speech someone came up to me and they were asking me about hey i'm having a difficult time working with this team getting them to function together building that synergy and it's almost like they wanted to do it overnight you know men mental toughness and resilience just just let's just get our wrap our our mind around this. You don't get there overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't quit. Don't quit. When it, when you have when you need that toughness and you need that resilience, come from a place of understanding. Come from a place of being curious as to why do I need to be resilient in this moment? What 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 why do I need mental toughness in this moment? Be be like that preparedness almost of wait a minute, what is it about this moment? that's signaling to me that I have to be tough in this moment. Like, why? What is it? And so get really curious about it. One of the things that I suggest and, and that I use myself is, is, I call it the three Ps, right? The three Ps. Number one is to pause. Pause. Just center yourself. Because if you're talking about resilience, like bouncing back from something, something that maybe is challenging and difficult and you need that mental toughness, just pause for a second. We don't need to figure it out in this moment. Obviously, if it's something like combat or human factor safety, I get that's a little bit different. But if it's not that, just pause, breathe, take that breath, take that breath. That's all you have to do and pause. Don't think about anything else but that. And the second thing, the second P is to ponder. This is where you get curious about it. Like, what? What am I feeling right now? Specifically, ask yourself this question. What meaning am I attaching to whatever's going on in this moment? Does this mean I'm not good enough? Does this mean I'm failing? Does this mean that I have to go give bad news to somebody? Like, what does it mean in this moment? Does it mean I won't get promoted? Think about that meaning because the meaning drives the emotion. It'll drive what you feel. And so when we pause, we center, get our nervous system right. Now we can ponder and think it through. What does this mean to me? And then the third P is pursue. Now we're gonna take action. We're gonna pursue some course of action that's intentional, that's deliberate. That's gonna allow us to practice that mental toughness. It's just gonna allow us to bounce back from something that's going on in our lives that may be difficult, whether it be in your personal or professional life. So pause, ponder, and pursue is one of the ways that you can continue to develop that resilience and that mental toughness. Every single day, think about pause, ponder, pursue, practice it so when the moment comes where you actually need it big time, you know how to actually execute the three Ps. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. And I love those three Ps. And it also reminds me that a leader has to be self-aware to even get Boom. to recognizing that. So as we're talking about self-awareness, what role does self-awareness play in leadership and how can individuals cultivate it if they don't have it? Yes. Uh, well, actually in the, in, in my speech, mission driven uh, leadership, how leaders can create profound employee engagement. This is a center 
piece of this. Now, the first thing is the mission. Like if we don't know what our mission is, it's kind of hard to achieve it because we need a clear, concise mission that really speaks to our heart. Okay. We, we need that in our lives in order to, to believe and to, and to proceed into something great. The self-awareness piece, awareness is the second point that I make, the second pillar. And there's awareness in various areas that we have to focus on in order to get a complete picture. But the self-awareness in particular, I almost think of it like when we used to talk to fighter pilots or elite operators on situational awareness. Okay, So think of it like this. You're, you have an operational environment, an operating environment. Maybe it's an office. Maybe it's, it's virtual, by the way. Whatever your operating environment, think of it like a sandbox, okay? You have a sandbox, and when you step into that sandbox, you're operating. Now, what do you have to do first in order to create this? Number one is you have to perceive something within that sandbox, that operating environment. God gave us these great sensory systems. We have to use them. We have to use them to perceive, to pay attention to something. Once we pay attention to something, now we can begin to try to comprehend it. We want to understand what's going on within us, right, and outside of us. So once we start to comprehend based on the information, knowledge, and experiences that we have, we can now begin to predict what may happen. So this is where I talk about building that self-awareness. Okay, number one, am I perceiving, am I receiving the right information? And how am I digesting that information? What does it make me think and feel? And based on that, what can I predict would happen? What can I predict? Now, once I have that, I can make a decision. Now, decision doesn't mean action. It just means I've decided a course of action, but I haven't taken it yet. Many leaders may decide they want to do something, but they don't do it. Other leaders say, I decide it, and they move to that next step, which is action. Now, I'm going to take that action. When you take action, you get feedback. And guess what? We have to go back, loop it back to that perception. And now we take that, comprehend it, predict, decide, and act. No, that's powerful. And uh, thanks for sharing that. Self-awareness, obviously, key to a lot of things that leaders have to uh, be in charge of in order to execute in a way that they are happy for the result. And so very powerful. Now, when you're in a high-performing type of situation where you are giving it your all, and you're determined to the mission, right? To get a great outcome in a mission, there is this thing called burnout that could <laughs> occur for any leader at any given time. So how, how do you advise leaders to maintain a balance between high performance and preventing burnout? One of the things as far as like when it comes to balancing high performance and preventing burnout is, okay, I, I recently learned this. I'll share this with you. If you don't make time for yourself, life will make you it will force you to make time for yourself. It, 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 this is just how it works. I think when it comes to leaders maintaining a balance, it I actually don't think of it so much as a balance, but I think of more of it as investment. It's like multitasking, right? So people say now, you know, research talks about we don't, we're not really good at multitasking. We're just good at one thing at a time, serial type processors. I think the same way when it comes to burnout and high performance, we have to have each individual part and invest in those parts. One of those parts is self-care. You, you have to make time for yourself because before life forces you to make time for yourself, we're now we're making those appointments. We're now we're hurting ourselves or we're going home and we're frustrated. So making that time for yourself is number one. Self-care is a non-negotiable. It's a non-negotiable. Now, sometimes I'll, I'll hear, especially with coaching, it's like, hey, I have time for this. It's like, okay, well, let's look at your calendar. Let's look at your schedule. If you had to make time, where would it be? What could you do for 10 minutes? What could you do for five minutes? Let's just start with two minutes. That's it. Let's start with something to get our brain trained to start to value self-care and taking care of ourselves. We need that. We need that. So don't balance, but think of it as invest. I'm investing some time in myself to allow me to become more productive, become a better leader, become a better mentor, become a better, you name it, because you're actually taking care of yourself. One of the practices that I have, I read The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. And when I was a commander, we would actually pass this book around. It's only one page. And if an airman came by to visit, guess what? As they were waiting, they would sit in the chair and they could read that one page. 
And it allows us to reset our brain early in the morning, to think a little bit about our day, to focus on what we want it to look like. And if it doesn't occur in that way, how we want to handle that, how we want to show up as a leader. So in order to, to do that, think of it more as an investing, investing investment into what you're doing for yourself in order to become a better version of yourself. I love that visual of someone coming, you know, because we all come with this mindset on the date, right? And you may be coming to the commander and you're sitting down and, and you're actually giving them a reset before they come in there, which is great because sometimes we have our minds made up about a thing mm -hmm. and it takes a different approach to go from one stage to the other. So can you share a time when you worked with a leader who had to transform their approach and what was that process like? Yeah, there's actually the, there's, there's a couple of things that come to mind when we talk about transformation, because, you know, I think when we think about transformation, this is a big deal. Transformation is a big deal, right? Transformation again, doesn't happen overnight. Transformation is a process. Transformation is everything we just talked about, right? Self-awareness, awareness of your team, uh, uh, burnout, where they are, how they're feeling, what's going on, like having that awareness of what's going on. And then you can think about, okay, we're trying to, we have a vision of where we want to go in the future. We have this mission that we're trying to accomplish, but in order to do what? To transform something, to become something. And we talk about a transformational approach. The number one by far, and, and I, I tell this story, I won't tell the full story, but I'll give you a little bit of this story, is when I was stationed at the Pentagon working for a two-star general, Major General Kurt F. Neubauer, fighter pilot, F-16 pilot. And he just took the job of the Air Force Chief of Safety, okay? Now, safety is not typically where people say, yay, this is fun, safety. And they're like, okay, it's a lot of process, a lot of it's tedious things, rules. But I remember he went to give a briefing, a presentation to incoming commanders. So basically, these are like 06, the colonels in, in, in the Air Force. They're about to go all over the world to lead. And he said, hey, Fabio, you know, that's my call sign. Or he's like, Fabio, uh, here's a couple slides I want you to put into the, uh, into the presentation, into the slideshow. And I said, sure, no problem. So I had the standard slideshow with all the statistics of the accidents, of what the programs are, uh, what commanders have available to them in the safety world. And then his slides were of like General Curtis LeMay, uh, Colonel, Colonel Boyd, all these historical figures and leaders in our United States Air Force. I was like, hmm, interesting. So anyways, as a good executive officer, I put it all together and we go off to the actual briefing. And he gave the standard statistics, right? So the standard thing, but this is where the transformation came in. And it transformed me as a leader. It changed me forever. This first slide comes up of Curtis, uh, General Curtis LeMay. And all of a sudden, the general just starts pounding his chest, chin up, chest down. He starts talking about the, the history and, and, and the, the leadership that's come before every single person in that room, the heart and soul of the organization, of what it means to lead in the United States Air Force. He's talking about the people. He's talking about programs. And he's talking about statistics, but he's giving it life. He was giving it life. He gave me metrics. He gave metrics a heartbeat. He transformed the ordinary into something extraordinary. And I saw all these people leaning forward in their seats, paying attention. To it, and I just sat there in awe, like, what is going on here? Now, I'm not saying you got to, you know, hit your chest. And, but he found a way to connect the information to the hearts of the people, to make it meaningful to make it matter, to make each person in that room matter. And that transformational approach for me, it changed the way I led from that point forward. It changed the way I led as a squadron commander, and it works. This is why I talk about mission-driven uh, leadership. It works. When you apply the process, you will create profound employee engagement. In fact, in the speech that I give, I have a, a, a section here where it's experiential. You see this gladiator helmet behind me? We actually have people come up and raise the helmet. And this is why we use this approach in, in, in the speaking engagements, because there's somebody in that audience who's thinking to themselves, do I really want to go up there and raise the helmet? I, I, want, I want to experience that, but something is holding them back. There's this internal dialogue, this barrier that's happening within them. And so this is where the transformation truly starts. 
Because once we get that self-awareness of what's going on within, now, now we can start the process of putting ourselves in situations where we grow, where we do transform. And so when people come up, and, and I always ask, by the way, I always do this at the end. I say, you know, all, people come up, they raise the helmet. It's great. They have that experience. They're applying everything that we just talked about. And then I say, is there anyone else, anyone else that wants to come up and raise the helmet? And I'll pause. And guess what happens? Someone comes up or somebody in the audience encourages somebody to come up and they raise the helmet and you see the transformation on the stage once again. And that's the type of experiences of commitment, of courage, of bravery that we need in order to truly transform the way we lead, to truly create that profound employee engagement. It starts in here. It's hard to lead people outside if we don't really focus on what's inside. That's how we get the transformation. Yeah, absolutely. And that commander, that uh, that uh, general brought life to that meeting. And I could see it because I went to senior enlisted, CMC, and CO school, right? And there's a lot of folks that come and they're trying to, you know, get you ready for this command, this senior enlisted that are supportive of the commander. And they, you know, we go to school together. So if you came in, at this stage where, you know, it's a significant milestone for these individuals. They're not looking to get beat down. They're looking to say, Hey, I got a future here. Hey, right. I could do this thing. And yes, look at the numbers, but it's me. Right. And when right. you get leaders to understand that it is them, uh, that the mission does get completed by the, the whole, right. Everybody mm -hmm. has a piece, but, life or death comes from the leader. And if you can right. bring life right out the bat, forget it. You got it. You got it in the bag. <laughs> well, thank right. you for sharing that story. Very powerful. And yes, transformation is so important. And I hope that all the viewers or listeners are on a transformation journey because that's really where life happens. Now, Alex, I wanted to ask you, and you talk about your coaching, you talk about your speaking, and all the things that are you do, you're doing, but what do you have coming up and how can the listener or viewer get a hold of you? No, absolutely. I, it's, you know, it's easy to get a hold of me. LinkedIn is the best platform to get a hold of me. And then also at coachalexramos.com. So coachalexramos.com. There you can find more information about the speech, reels, um, background. So just you can reach me there. And like I said, it's it's really been a joy. It's been a joy to find this new new journey, working with other organizations, seeing people just feel like they can do something. They can lead. You know, what I found is in the military, we, we face leadership challenges, but guess what? We're human and they're human challenges. And on the, on the outside, if you will, now working with the corporate America and especially mid-level managers who are trying to execute the vision and mission, trying to get things done and figuring out how to do that. I think the coaching has really been eye-opening for me to see, to see how much people want engagement, to see burnout, to see communication challenges. So if, if that's, that interests you, obviously you can reach me LinkedIn and also at coachalexramos.com. Absolutely. And folks, we'll have that as part of the show notes and the video for you to get a hold of Alex and all that he offers. And I want to remind everybody that today's episode is sponsored by Fantail Services and Superpass, which are powering our website and app, Southern Sweet and Sassy Coffee, The Outlier Project, and Duco. And if you've enjoyed the episode today and learned something interesting about the topic, make sure to subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment. And we're always looking for new ideas and guests that we can add to our show. So if you know someone or have a topic that you would like covered or featured on a podcast or want to sponsor our show, please let us know by leaving an email at triadleadershipsolutions at gmail.com. And this podcast is brought to you by StreamYard, a browser-based tool that lets you live stream and record podcasts in studio quality. And we are recording this podcast with it. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode where we dissect leadership from another angle. 
And as we like to end the show, success to you.